This tech support video is all about the lights. Lumos Maxima. Lumos Maxima. In this video, I'm installing some LED lights onto the printer I've been redesigning. I was creatively bankrupt with naming the project, so I ended up just calling it The Redesign. I know, so original. I know the title of this video hyped up some huge failure on my end, but it's all clickbait. Oh brother, this guy stinks! But, since you're here, you might as well watch me hook up some lights, and I'll show you what I did so you won't have to print in the dark. Unless you like the darkness. I don't know. This is a song I wrote for Wild Style. Darkness. It's about how I'm an orphan. No parents. One technique to install LED lights onto your printer actually draws inspiration from the Quiddy X Smart 3 printer. If you have one, you'll see the lights turn on immediately after the power switch is on and the light will illuminate the build volume while printing and even for a few minutes after finished printing. But they will turn off after a set period of time. This can actually be achieved fairly easy. Now, I say fairly easy, but it's going to be a firmware heavy solution. And if the statistics are correct, this is probably your first time watching one of my videos. And for that, I'm sorry. Please subscribe though and come back. In Marlin 2.0, basically the firmware that is controlling your 3D printer, you can create a cooling fan from the defined use controller fan code in the advanced configuration section. This is going to be the key to getting your lights to be one, powered by the board, and two, turning off when the machine stepper motors are idle. Now, usually this code is used to set up a fan so that it cools the stepper motor drivers on the board when the motors are active or idle. But did you know you can actually rig the whole thing to perform a different task? In this case, you can set up this controller fan to turn on lights, not actually a fan, when the motors are active by reassigning the pin this fan is connected to. I know, it's a lot. For our lights, we need pins on the board that provide 12 volts. And I'm choosing fan 1 slot shown right here. The board I'm using is a Big Tree Tech SKR Pro V1.2. This is empty on my printer because I'm not using a second extruder that has a cooling fan. So I find the name of the pin on the board called PE5. Marlin also stores this information in a source folder and each board is going to have its own .h folder for the pin names. The pins that I'm looking for are stored in the BTT SKR Pro Common .h folder. And this is going to tell me the same information that's in the Big Tree Tech documentation that I showed earlier. That the fan 1 pin is called the PE5. This .h folder has all of the pins of the board that you could need to reference and the corresponding pin name that Marlin is assigned to them. So in my case, fan 1 is linked with PE5. Now that you have the pin name, you can just go to the configuration advanced.h folder and this is where you're going to find the section to set up the controller fan. All you have to do is remove the green forward slashes so that the lines are activated and are not green. On the Define Controller Fan Pin, this is where you're going to want to put that PE5 or the Marlin name of the pin, Fan1 underscore pin, it's all the same. Also, you can set the power level to full voltage 255 
for when the motors are active and your printer is running. You can then also set the power level to zero if the motors are not active so the lights will turn off when your printer is not running. Running the LED light strip was pretty easy. I was going to try to 3D print a whole mount to hold the lights, but for now I just stuck them to the top aluminum extrusion. Also, since they left the LED strip open, I went ahead and connected the cooling fan that would cool my drivers to it. You know, since I was here. If life gives you current, connect a fan to it. The LED has a red positive wire and a black negative, all connecting to the fan one slot on the board, and this current will go from the fan one pin to light up the LEDs across the top aluminum extrusion. The current would then go to spin my fan above the electronics and cool the drivers. For testing purposes, I played around with the idle line code and also set it to full power. And it worked pretty well. Also, I will note, when I had it set on idle for zero, this also worked and would only activate when the motors were moving. Everything worked pretty well in both cases and I went ahead and mounted the fan. And the results were amazing. Okay, there was one problem. Is this not why you were here? So I thought I went full Clark Griswold with the lights and all the electronics I had put on my printer. When I was doing some initial testing, I had the lights come on as normal. But it was when I turned the print bed heater on that I noticed it. The flickering. You can see the flickering and it drove me crazy. But still, it's not the worst thing that could happen to you when you try to turn on your 3D printer. Honey? So, why is it doing this? The voltage to the board should be independent of the voltage that goes to the stepper motors and to the bed heater. So, the bed heater and any component that is powered by the board directly should be independent of each other. I checked the power supply to the board and this is showing a 12 volt in. So, due to this, I was more inclined to believe that my issue of the flickering lights was related to the board itself. And I'll show you what I found out. This is fan 1 slot of 11.69 volts being provided by the board when there is no heater on. Now watch as I turn the print bed heater on. The fan 1 voltage drops to 10.91 volts. Thus, we get flickering lights. Now, that was the fan 1 slot, but my curiosity wanted to see if this happens to the main slot, fan 0, that is used for cooling prints. So, I did the same test. When I measured the fan 0 slot before the heater was turned on, I had a reading of 11.67 voltage. And then, when I turned on the heater bed, the fan 0 pin output drops to 10.89 volts. This seems to be a common thing across the fan pins. The voltage drops when the heater is turned on. 
for these lights, I need a more consistent voltage that is supplied without any drops to avoid these flickering lights. Maybe if my printer was going to be used in some haunted house, but for now, there would need to be a more direct way to provide the light's voltage. We're going to have to go old school on this one and use a switch and connect to the power supply itself. Right now, we don't have the switch, but I'll install it later when we do. Uh, I'll show you right now, I do have the lights working as they're connected directly to the power supply. And when the heater is turned on, we don't have any of the flickering. But I'll go into more detail on this installation later. Thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss a video. I hope you had a laugh and enjoyed the content. Leave a like and a comment below. Check out my links that are listed in the description. I hope your 3D printing is awesome and I'll see you all in the next video.